And welcome to the Eagle's Nest here on Tuesday evening, beautiful day, 80 degrees, sun going down on the western skies, got a 10 mile an hour west wind coming in, so that might affect the, the game tonight a little bit, but uh, well, we're back here on the campus of Holy Savior Menard, it's been a week, it's been a week, so um, the last time we were here we had a, <laughs> an amazing walk off home run by Cooper Scott right here to the perch, uh, just an exciting moment. Uh, we're, here we are tonight here, and we're playing the Oakdale Warriors, who come in as the number four ranked in Division Four, non-select, and they're 13 and six, and and five and one in district. They're one loss coming to Glenmore, and your Holy Savior Menard Eagles come in at number five in Division Three, select, and six and zero oh in district, and 13 and eight on the season. Uh, Danny Clear is out. He's a healthy scratch tonight. He's down there with Miss Becky, and they're in. And the Gulf Shores having a good time on this spring break. And uh, I'm here with Waylon LaRue. He's uh, making an adjustment, getting some stuff put into our game changer so we can have some stats as we go. Uh, but uh, we're going to cover the starting lineups now for you, for the Oakdale Warriors. This year, Velar and Green uh, starting lineups. For Oakdale, we have number one, actually lead off batter number one, Dakota Johnson. We have bat number two. And in the two slot, we have number seven, Keen Maselli. In the three hole, we have number 23, Tristan Hayden. In the cleanup slot, we have number 16, Brendan Strother. In the five slot, we have number we have number three, um, Denver Daniels. In the six hole, we have number five, or no, number 17, excuse me, Maddox Thompson. In the seven hole, we have number five, Tim Horn. In the eight hole, we have number two, Terrence Robinson. And uh, who's also the DH. In the nine hole, we have number eight, Mason Giles. And your pitcher tonight, who's being DH4, is Kyler Ballard. Your pitcher is Kyler Ballard. So let's go over to your Eagles starting lineup. And we have, starting off tonight, leading off as usual, the man of the hour last year, uh, last week, Cooper Scott. Scott leading off. We have been in the, in the two hole tonight. And um, number 18, Cohen LaRue. LaRue in the two hole. And as usual, we have Carter Markintel. Markintel in the three hole. And the cleanup spot, we have Drake Aldridge. Aldridge in the cleanup spot. Bat number five, and he settled in there real well behind Drake is Case Butterfield. Butterfield in the, in the five hole. Bat number six, uh, uh, and has done really well here lately with the bat, is Ben Wade, also behind the dish. Wade number six. Nate Bilbo, your third baseman tonight, and batting number seven, Bilbo batting number seven. Your center fielder tonight, Jay Guillory. Guillory's batting number eight in center field. And your number nine batter and your shortstop tonight, Gavin Hilton. Hilton is your shortstop and your number nine batter. And on the bump tonight, we have Mike Henry. Mike Henry, there's Michael's number. So Michael's going to be getting a start and, and doing real well. He's undefeated this year. Um, so far, and uh, just doing a really good job on the hill. So I uh, want to talk about our sponsors here before we bring Coach LaRue on. Uh, our title sponsor for Menard Baseball and 446 Sports, Certified Transmission, uh, Riverside Hospital. You have a choice with your health care. Choose Riverside. Amy Grimes helping us. Del Morrow was with Certified Transmission. Amy Grimes with uh, Riverside Hospital. Exmark Sinlaw Dealers, Jay Sullivan, uh, Eight local dealers, the X Mark, in this time of the year where we always need lawnmowers, we need service. So look at uh, look up one of those fine eight dealers out there for X Mark Cinelon dealers. Uh, Laniap Home Care, Jamie Shelton with the Central Management Group, Laniap Home Care, Green Garden Nursery, Stephen Donna Wade, uh, their son being is uh, is the catcher behind the bump. Sabine State Bank, 17 locations in Central Louisiana. And uh, their closest one is right here next door to, to the campus of Holy Savior Menard. Louisiana Land Bank, Robert Crotty. Uh, appreciate Louisiana Land Bank. Magnolia Construction, Chris Dalbanian for building the perch out here and uh, giving us a nice spot to, to watch and, and witness that uh, Cooper Scott home run last week. And uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, who's, uh, we are going to have a coaches show this Sunday from 7 to 8. It's around the diamond with, with Scully and Marks. Come out and join us for that. Uh, and try their new honey sriracha wings. They're they're really good. The A and A Club, who's uh, who's the sponsor of the the camera that you're looking at the view right now on your screen. The 
the pitch cam. I want to thank A and A Club for that. South of the four way catering has your sponsor for your first pitch, and uh, Coach Larue and the Porch Crew already already fed us out here tonight. We had crawfish bread, shrimp bread, and some boudin on the side. That's my kind of side. So, and then I uh, want to thank John Wolf and John Wolf's family for supporting us and supporting Holy Savior Menard in all aspects of, of, of what Holy Savior Menard stands for. So appreciate John. And then some special thanks. Thanks, Coach Jordan, Coach Scully, Coach, Coach Turney, the porch crew, as I said earlier, uh, HSM Athletics, appreciate them allowing us to have 446 out here for, for football, soccer, baseball, basketball, and softball. And speaking of softball, Coach Scully, they're, they're playing a district game tonight against Rose Pine, and they have a 10-game win streak, and they're 6-0. and So uh, hoping that Coach Scully and the, and the crew can, can keep it going and, uh, and stay undefeated in district tonight. And then I want to thank Daryl uh, and Cindy Campbell for all they do for Holy Savior Menard and for what they've done you know, for us out here as well at 446 Sports. We're going to take our first break of the night, and when we come back, we'll bring Coach LaRue onto the, onto the broadcast. You're, you're watching Menard Baseball on 446 Sports. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier, transactions are getting safer, and you have access 24-7. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. some things in life you can fix and some things are better left to the professionals when your vehicle has transmission problems what will you do go where you know go where you know certified transmission Time for our red, white, and cool summer event at Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Right now, you can save on a new energy saving system. No money down, 0% interest, and no payments till June 2024. Call Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing or visit us online. And welcome back to the Eagles Nest here on the campus of Holy Savior Menard. Now it's Andrew's in, and now I'm joined by Coach Waylon LaRue, who also has a son on the team. He's filling in. Uh, I'm not going to say coming out the bullpen because that's the, that's that baseball <laughs> analogy. So, uh, but no, he's uh, he's um, going to fill in. He, he you, you were with us for the for the Iowa game, and uh, and had a really good time. And uh, welcome to the broadcast, Coach. Yeah, thanks, Nick, for having me out. Um, like I said, glad I could fill in for Danny. Um, and um, look, it's a, it's a pretty day for baseball. I know we had a shower come through earlier, and and um, that's the power of that turf, I guess, is you kind of worry about it, but once it's clear, and, and Coach Marks does a great job. We got the, he's got the grass, the field in great shape, so we get ready to play some baseball today. Yeah, we were. Uh, I saw earlier where uh, where Grace Christian uh, they were hosting uh, Rapids tonight, and they had to you know postpone their game because of that. And uh, so, like you said, the power to turf. Uh, I was out here working on the perch a little yesterday evening and uh, yesterday afternoon after work, and Coach Jordan was out here mowing the grass and uh, cut it a little low, so uh, so it drained. But like I said, as long as we don't have – this is the one good time, in my opinion, because you know I'm an old dirtbag coach. There's one good time where we're, it's good to have the, the turf. You can get these games in if the outfield's not too bad. Definitely, so, definitely. Well, you're going to see we have the clear cam, which is uh, on the umpires right now, and that's going to be the – camera hopefully that we can use to to get the batters whenever they come up uh we have our a and a pitch cam which is behind the view and uh and you can see that and then we're going to have a, a follow cam here which i have it on your your eagles logo right now but uh like it's exciting about tonight coach I mean, looks Oak like Hills. we got a little three-man crew. So I mean, yeah. this is a big, big district game. So we we got to bring three of them out here. Hopefully, it um, helps out with the with the officiating. Thirteen and six. I mean, yes, thirteen and six. Coach coming in. They're number four 
in the Vision 4, uh, non-select, um, you know, so the 5-1 and one in district, or one loss coming to Glenmore. I talked to the, to the pitcher and catcher who's starting here and said it was walks. I said, well, y'all wearing the LSU colors, so y'all just trying to wow. act like LSU. We're going to pause here for the, for the national anthem and for the prayer. And welcome back to the Eagles Nest. That was a great rendition of the National Anthem and a good, great prayer before that. So um, we're about ready to start. Mike Henry's on the bump. Uh, no, Mike's undefeated. I think he's 4-0. Uh, my statistician is in Gulf Shores right now, but we're going to uh, we're gonna say he's 4-0. We know he's undefeated, and Mike's done a great job. He's uh, he come in uh, against Ash and, and, and finished off and, and, and won, you know, that game for that inning he had in the in the ninth and uh you know it's in relief of cohen and then um then also the um the um no oh, danny he's telling me we forgot the flexi score and i've got it right here so let me try to fix that real quick while we're on the broadcast yeah guys um hopefully mike um mike needs a good outing today mike's a big part of our pitching staff um you know we made a state championship run last year and Mike played a big role in that. He came in some big games and some big moments, and um, and was able to slam the door and um, help help us help Menard um, succeed and make the state finals last year. And um, and like I say, this year we need the um, you know same productivity and um, and I'm glad he's getting a chance to get a start right here and get some um, get some quality innings and um, and basically get ready for a good playoff run. Um, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yeah, so coach, the, um, talk about the. Uh, let's see, we have top four. So if so, if we can get into top four, uh, definitely host a, a first round. Well, top. Talk to them about the. Uh, how do you host a first round playoff series? Well, in Division Three, the, it's twenty teams makes it, and the first twelve teams get a buy in, into the playoffs, and um, and then after that, it's it's really if you're a top eight team, you host a first round. And if you're fortunate enough to advance, um, usually the top four teams host um, the second round before you got to – well, it's really the quarterfinals before you get to Sulphur. Gotcha. We have a 
2 and 0 here. We're going to go ahead and just call this first half inning and then try to get the scoreboard up. That's strike one there for Mike. So 2 and 1 now. We have Dakota Johnson up the bat with uh, Keen Maselli in your X mark on deck circle. 2 1 pitch here from Henry. Got a fly ball out here to center field. Looks like Jay Giller is going to camp underneath it. And that's a good job there by Jay for the first out of the, the inning there. So. One up, one down for. It's always good to get that first out. It's, I don't know the exact percentages, but I promise you, if you can get the lead off out, you're usually going to stop having big innings. That's good stuff. So now we have Keen Maselli up to bat with uh, Tristan Hayden in the X mark on deck circle. First pitch by Mike. It's a little low for ball one. Yeah, Mike's just one of the 14 sen seniors on this team. I know we've talked about that the whole season. There's a Riverside Hospital foul ball there. So now one and one. And then your Eagles turn around and play at Tioga tomorrow. 5.30 start, coach. 5.30 start time. and um, Great pitch there by Mike. Yeah, that was a good pitch there. He got him out front and a little swing and check swing miss there. So tomorrow's 5 30 and they play at War 10, right? At War 10. Good. Another one there. Good job by Ben. Yep. We're going to knock that down, Ben. Throw that to Drake for your second out of the inning. Good work there, men. What you think about that start so far, coach? Good, good. Exactly what you need. As a, as a coach, you know, that first inning is always tough. And, you just tell your guys to come out, fill up the zone, let your defense work. And I know that's that's kind of an old adage, but at the end of the day, you know, let them, let your D play, fill up the zone, and um, and let your guys play behind you. And it keeps them engaged. Oh, this one's deep. Yeah, that's good. We got it. Get, we need to turn and run. Let's go, guys. That one's going to get down there. Case Butterfield brings it into second base there. So two out, double from – from that was Tristan Hayden, yeah, he, he who's your shortstop. That was a good – he, he hit that ball really well. So now they have a runner on second base with two outs, top of the first steal. Nobody's hurt, gentlemen. Just focus on the batter. Here we have uh, Braden Strother up to bat with Denver Daniels in the X mark on deck circle. First pitch by Henry. Riverside Hospital foul ball there. Way to bounce back there, Mike. Other Riverside Hospital foul ball sets. Oh, two. Mike's throwing strikes and Oakdale's being aggressive, which I like that. They, they kind of come out, they want to hit the ball. Keeps your defense on your toes. As a defensive player, you'd rather get lulled to sleep, be on your toes, ready for something to happen. That's right. Good throw by Ben. Got Good it. Good play. Good play there. <laughs> Green Garden Nursery throw out there by Ben Wade for your third out of the, the inning. So we, on that one, we have – uh, no runs on one hit with uh, one left. Well, well guess one he's left not, on base. not oh, well. left on base. He, he, that's right. So you're watching Menard Eagle football, and four, I mean, uh, baseball, and 446 sports. Hi, I'm Kimberly Harrell, certified residential appraiser. I am currently a leading provider of appraisal services for mortgage lending, employee relocation, estate planning, and community property settlements. My experience in real estate over the past 13 years and currently serving as president of the Greater Central Louisiana Realtors Association has given me a clear understanding of the real estate world and the ever-changing market we live in today. For any of your valuation needs, give me Kimberly Harrell a call.
All right, welcome back to the Eagles Nest here with Cooper Scott up to bat. And with, uh, we have Colin LaRue and the X Mark on deck circle. Still working on the flexi score thing here. Sorry about he, that. He went away and saw the Cooper. I didn't think he wanted to throw him a fastball. Uh oh. Cooper got out front a little bit. Yeah, Cooper flies out to the center fielder there for out number one. Now Colin LaRue up to bat with Carter Mark and Tony X Mark on deck circle. Cohen's swinging a, a better bat here since he's moved to this two slot. I know you don't want to talk that well about your son, but I will. He's done he's done really well with it. Ball one there. Yeah, he's um like I said, hitting so, so much mental, so much confidence, and um no matter where you're at in the lineup, but nowhere no matter where you're at in the lineup, you gotta get the job done. So that's kind of the the main thing here is find a way to get on base and Batting in that two hole, you need to make sure you're advancing runners. Yeah, and he's now two and zero here. Your pitcher is Kyler Ballard. Pitch to Larue. Shot right here to third baseman for your second out of the inning there. So two up, two down for the Eagles. And uh, you know that's kind of <laughs> it's kind of been the issue. Uh, I'm about to say, Danny, coach uh, is really sometimes. You know, get somebody on base and struggle to, to get them home, and sometimes it's just a just hard hit balls to to people where they're, where yeah, they're that's, playing. That's you know, like I say, all you can do as a hitter is hit it hard and say it's going to find places. But that was a great play by the third baseman. It was a hard hit ball, but it was a good turf ball, like I like to call one candy hop, one hopper, and um, makes it a little bit easier. But but you still got to make the play, and he made the play. Ball one there to Carter. So. Yeah, these these minority hitters just got to be patient and wait on the wait to get their pitch and then try to drive it. Ball two outside there. Yeah, so. he's falling behind. When you're getting plus counts, you got to look for something you can really drive right here, and you want to hit gap to gap. So let's see if Carter gets something he can drive. Ball three. So are we putting the bat on the shoulder here and not. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and not worried about. Anything that happens here, huh? I, don't, I think Carter knew because he didn't even look at Coach Jordan. <laughs> so if he swings here, it's going to be big trouble. There you go. So, three one now. So now you still in that plus count? So he's still hunting. He's he's still looking for something he can drive right here. And you still want the perfect pitch? Huh? Yeah, you want something you can hit hard. That's a good take. Yep, yep. ball four there. So we have a. Louisiana Land Bank base on balls there for Carter Marcantel, which brings up Drake Aldrich with Case Butterfield next mark on deck circle. See Drake in your screen there. Does his traditional cross right there by the batter's box. Yeah, Drake, Drake's the one right here. If he gets a hold of something, if he stays back in that backside and back leg and lets the ball travel to him, he can hit it a long way. I wouldn't mind seeing him put Carter in motion right here. Let's let's see what kind of move this kid got and get get him in scoring position. Strike one there, so how's that A and A pitch cam look, coach? It looks good. That's that's a great view. Hopefully everybody at home enjoys it too. It helps us. A one pitch. Carter. Good, Just good take second base on. there. Good job. Good work there, Carter. So you know you was in a curveball count right there, so that's a great time to take a chance to steal a base. And you know if he gets thrown out, you got Drake leading off the next inning. So now he's in scoring position. Let's see if we can get him home. One-one here to Aldridge from Ballard. Well, that'll get it done. Uh, let's go. Let's go, Carter. Roll. Yep. Single in there for Drake Aldridge with your first RBI. Good work there, gentlemen. So we have one nothing lead here for the Eagles. Where Drake Aldridge is now on first base. Case Butterfield up to bat with Ben Wade and your X mark on deck circle. Still two outs. You know, that's a situation there where that's just, you know, some good baseball. You playing good, you get the runner second base, you you 
not Drake's best swing, but he did he did what what it needed to be. He he poked to the right field and got us a run on. What I call manufacturing a run. There you go. Drill walk, stole the base. Drake hit it behind him. I don't see us putting Drake in motion here, but you <laughs> never know. Ball one there to Case. <laughs> See where I think Drake convinced a few of them to, to dye their hair, huh, Coach? Was that? I think Cooper may be the only one that dyed it that I could see. I, I actually hadn't got to see the guy, so um, I, I don't know who's all <laughs> yellow headed. I know in the Rue household, it, it was dire warnings that Cody Rue would not dye his hair for 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 senior um, for graduation, but we'll see. <laughs> well, Drake advances on that on that wild pitch, so Drake's a second base. Case Butterfield up there with a two zero count. Oh, so that's a hitter's pitch right here, isn't it? All three there, so three and no. Drake stays at home. At second base there. It's 3 0. Yep, 3 0. Ballard's gonna have to dig deep here for the for the Warriors. Thought that might have been a little inside from here, Something, looking yeah. at the catcher's mitt there, but Umpire gave it to him, so 3-1 here. Yeah, and plus count here. Let's look to hit the ball hard somewhere. Drake needs to be anticipating something in the gap where he can score on it. Or or get get, get hit, hit by a pitch hit there. Pitch. So That'll work, too. So now Nate Bilbo up to bat with uh, – no, I'm sorry, Ben Wade up to bat with ben Nate Bilbo and your X mark on deck circle. So, You know, Ben Wade had a you – know, again, I don't know the exact stats, but Ben Wade, he's, the last two games he's been swinging the bat a little bit better. He's been yeah, making he hard contact. I know – here at Rose Pine, he, we had an earlier situation in the first inning. He hit a line drive on a hit and run that just, you know, unfortunate play, but he hit it hard in the second baseman, made a, a line drive right at the second baseman. So. Yeah, no, he is hitting the ball better. Um, yeah, it's again, it's all confidence with him. Like I said, these, these kids have been playing together a long time, and it's just believing in what you can do. Ball one there to Ben. So Case Butterfield on first, Drake Aldridge on second. Nate Bilbo on the X mark on deck circle. We'll take one to the perch right now if he wants yes, to. Yes, we would. One. Yes, we would. Now, wind's blowing this way too, Coach. Fought that off that foul ball? Oh, no, fair ball. Yeah, a little number to first base yeah. there. First baseman takes it. So, we're going to not go to commercial break, so I can work on this flexi score, but we're going to go mute here for just a second. So, so hopefully we can get this situated. And we're back to the Eagles Nest here with uh, number 15. No, number 16. Braden Straw, they're up to bat. Yeah, he got him a new count here. He was 0-2 to in it. Oh, he's aggressive. He likes to swing the bat. Strike one there. And yes, we're working on your schedule, uh, your scoreboard here. Sorry about this. We are in the 
Top of the second Six. inning. Your Eagles are up one nothing after one. Mike Henry still on the mound. One one pit. One one count here. You know, getting back to that last inning, we talk about manufacturing runs. You know, uh, it's no matter what level of baseball you at. I, I, no matter if it's nine, ten year old baseball, oh, there's a little pop up. Yep, looks like Cohen's hundred. So, so Strother flies out to Larue at second base for your first out of the inning. So now we have Daniels, your catcher, with Maddox Thompson in your X mark on deck circle. You know, what I was saying is, is no matter what level of baseball you out, walk, score is what I've always preached to my kids. So if we don't get free bases, we got a chance to win. Ball one there from Michael Henry. And the praise John's walking in. You been able to keep up with him at all? I have. I've, I'm so busy with – with keeping up with my crew, but yeah, definitely Jeff does a good job of keeping us informed, and Andrew's having a great year over there at um, Meridian. Swing and strike there, so one and one. So Daniels did tell us while they were warming up, he did tell us he was going to send us a few balls out here. So let's see. Oh, hit by a pitch there, so it's going to be a runner on base for for the Warriors. So we have Thompson up to bat now with Horn. In your hex mark on deck circle. One away. And they're going to. They're going to courtesy run for yeah. the catcher. Courtesy runners number 18, which I don't have numbers beside on the uh, substitutions on the subs. So, so number 18 is courtesy running for Daniels. It looks like. Uh, Thompson's a, a lefty, southpaw here, so. So we kind of move. So Mike, give us a ground ball right here, and let's roll it and get out of here. We got a little squaring around the bunt early. And that one gets past Ben, so that's going to advance the courtesy runner. Like I said, I apologize for not knowing the – I know his name, but he's number 18 for the Oakdale Warriors. Came in for Daniels, who was hit by a pitch. So now it's a 1-0 count here to, to Thompson. That's Riverside Hospital foul ball back into your screen. So now 1-1. One one. Way to battle there, Mike. It sounds like they got the fresh fryer going over here at the Lady Eagles softball field. Might be for fries, huh? Oh, I'm sure. That's a good pitch there, Mike. Now one and two. All right, Mike, way to battle back here, buddy. Thompson's your second baseman. Foul ball out of here. Riverside Hospital foul ball, still one and two. You know, it's a situation where he's he's late, so you really don't want to throw him nothing too soft and speed up his bat. So, it's hopefully we change his eye level, move it up and down, but keep throwing him something hard right here, Mike. There you go. Another Riverside Hospital foul ball. Way to battle at the plate by Thompson. Officer calls again. Coming around behind the, the perch here, going towards the softball field. Looks like he's got Bruce Fairbanks with him. There we go. That's Ooh. not a bad pitch, Mike. What do we? Ooh. We got three umpires. We can check on both sides. That's that's one good thing about having three, especially with it being a lefty. <laughs> Boy, he uh. Thought he went around, Coach, but that's just me. Well, that's a great – now Now come back with him something hard. You know, like I say, I like to show him that, but nothing he can really hit. But let's let's try to get it by him right here. 2-2 two, two oh, pitch. Got him. Pitch, Sabine Mike. State Bank strikeout there. That shows you how much I know. 
So two outs now for your Eagles. And, uh, that's a great pitch by Mike. It was a very good pitch. Good at bat by Thompson. And just like I said, that's two guys out there competing against each other. And Henry won that battle. Yeah, uh, talking about that check swing. We were in Fayetteville on Friday and Saturday for the second and third game of the, the, the series. Good pitch. Yeah. Strike one there. And, and every check swing LSU swung. It was they it was, they, yeah. they called him safe. I <laughs> Every it check on TV. swing, yeah, it was it safe. Was, yeah. <laughs> Everyone the Razorbacks check swing at that was about the only thing that went LSU's way this weekend. So, uh, oh one here. It's been a little bit inside there. Yeah, but he's got him turning, so that means yeah. he's got good movement on. Well, it him. looks like he's kind of slowed down. He's finding his his off speeds where he's got a little bit more control of and rhythm. So. Two outs here in the top of the second. Good play. Oh. Good job, Mike. Way oh, to be an athlete. Mike. Way to be an athlete, Aiden. Good play there, man. So Mike with the fields it throws to Drake Aldridge for third out of the inning. So uh so we're gonna go here to the to the bottom half of the second inning here. You're watching Minority Minority Eagle Baseball and four for six sports. Yep, and welcome back to the nest here. We got our flexi score figured out thanks to Danny Clear, who's on vacation but on call. I appreciate him doing that. So Nate Bilbo with, uh, with a hit by pitch there to start off the bottom half of this second inning. So, so now we have Jay Guillory up to bat with Gavin Hilton in your X mark on deck circle. And uh, like I said, uh, Nate Bilbo up to – on first base, so it's a good start here, Coach. Yeah, well, we need to we need to put some crooked numbers up. You know, you get opportunities like this, you you know, you gotta make it, you gotta make it count. Ballard still on the mound. I see the sevens up, so he's he's looking a little ball later. one there. What's that about seven? I said the third baseman's playing up, so I'm seeing he's anticipating bunt right here. Um, Gilry didn't show us right there. He's been making good contact. How aggressive will they be with Nate? Riverside Hospital foul ball and catch there. Oh, we drop. Oh, safe. You get one chance at it. Now you're putting down the bunt. <laughs> yeah, that's really needs to be an error on the catcher, but I know that's unfortunate. Hmm. Uh, do, you, do you call it an error when it's the second strike or the first strike? Uh, if I'm the pitcher, I definitely call it an error because that's an out. So, yeah. Let's Mr. see if we Steve can put... Wade walking behind us. A little number there by Jay for another Riverside Hospital foul ball. Here. Main thing is get that kid to second base and, and do a job. You know, it's really a simple game. 
and you know. Ball two there, so two and two. Your Eagles up one nothing. Scored one in the bottom half, bottom half of the first. No outs. Nate Bilbo on first base. Jay Gilly up to bat. Two two here from Ballard. Pitch. Another Riverside Hospital foul ball out of play there over to Menard Bleachers. Not that big of a crowd out here today, Coach. With I guess the holiday. Yeah, it's it's uh, we got I guess uh, mom and daddies are here watching. This ain't yeah with the holidays everybody's probably out of town and um, you know watching with the Knights um, organization local send a lot of Knights and uh, we had a lot of those kids out here come out and watch the game and get to take the field with the big guys and um, it was it was. I see Nate Bilbo going into second base uh, third base and Jay would uh, stand up double here with no outs so now runners on second and third with Gavin Hilton up the back on this one. So it makes that drop um, foul ball Very much of, so. uh, huge. Now, again, let's see how, how Menard does right here if we kind of keep the pressure on. First pitch from Ballard to Hilton. Ball one, good block by the catcher. Same thing, deep breath here at the plate, do a job. Try to make solid contact, hit it hard. Gavin had a streak there. He was really hot with the bat, and um, he's, you know, when he's producing, it's really good. Ballard with one no pitch. Kind of, he uh, doesn't have a lot of velo on it. No, but he, he's, he's looks like he's throwing it from a three quarter angle, which yep. is kind of different, and and you know gives you a different look. So you're gonna be able to, to see that on success. the a pitch cam there, coach, yep. if you want to look at it. That one's outside there for ball two, so two and one here to Gavin. Still no outs, bottom of the second. Nate Bilbo on third and Jake Guillory on second. Two-one pitch. That's going to be to the shortstop who's – oh, there was an error there, so you'll see yep. Jay Guillory come in. Gavin will advance to second on the – on the wild throw there by the shortstop, so. That's a tough play, and he, he kind of had to, Gavin was getting down the line pretty good, and he tried to make a quick throw off balance and kind of ball ran up the line on him a little bit. Yeah, Cooper's got up the bat now with uh, Cohen LaRue X mark on deck circle. See Coop there, and Coop's coming off a big week. Like I said, he had that walk off. In the home game against Rose Pine, and then pitched a complete game against Rose Pine the next day. There's a pop up right there. Oh, catcher caught that one. Yeah, he didn't miss that one. So, first out of the inning. So, Cohen LaRue up to bat now with Carter Mark until the next mark on deck, sir. So, is that a is that one of yours and Brandy's songs, Coach? Oh, uh, those kids, I don't know about their music. <laughs> his walk-up song. It sounds song like a song from the his, 80s. His walk-up song and his pitching song are like two opposites. So. <laughs> two different approaches, Coach. Yeah. There's a shot here. It's going to be oh, – he's going to call a foul. Foul ball. Oh, no, he called foul ball. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. All right. I can look at – they look – the umpires are looking at each other like, okay, who's supposed to make that call? So <laughs> – Third base umpire made it. I think he was looking at the home plate umpire to make it. But. Okay. So I, so when I tried to follow the play is whenever he pointed. Okay. So yeah. I tell you that, that one, that one that Tommy Tanks hit in the top of the ninth, we were right there at third base line, right where the third base umpire was. I mean, he, oh, here's a shot, coach. But it's, oh, it's going to get down. So that's going to. job. It's going to score Gavin. See what kind of wheels he got here. Is he going to go for three? It looks like he's going to try to make it. Okay. Cohen slides in there. <laughs> Safe. Used the bag to, to stop his slide. So, got a triple there for LaRue. So, scores Gavin Hilton. So, he's got an RBI. And uh, now your Eagles up 4 nothing. Still one out. Carter Marcantel up the bat. Cohen in your screen there gets a fist bump from Coach Jordan. And, uh. Now, Drake Aldridge next mark on deck circle. So, see if, uh, see if Carter can keep this going. 
All one there from Ballard. Good attempt here for the from the left fielder. Yeah, he, he kid laid out for it. It was a great, good, good, good hit ball. And I wouldn't tell you I've been showing Cohen some tr trying to be a positive um, dad. I've been showing him clips of when he had success, and he um, and um, hopefully <laughs> that's another clip we can share. Ball three there. So Carter, that's the second time Carter has been in a three zero count. Yeah, number eight out here, Mason Giles with the the left fielder with that attempt and. Uh, Good thing about it is he uh, here's a picture to Carter. Ball strike one. Ball didn't get too far by him, so uh, no. Carter needs to sit back right here. Carter's got quick hands. He just needs to wait on it and just explode. He's he's really got more. He's he's really he's in that three hole for a reason. He's got a lot of power and um, he's, he's when he hits it, he can hit it. L.A. Land Bank base on balls there by Carter Markintel. So Drake Aldridge up the bat with. Uh, Case Butterfield, the X mark on deck circle. So, one out here. Cohen LaRue on third base. With that one out triple. So, we putting Carter in motion here, Coach. Definitely. Carter's one of your better base runners. And um, I don't know if we've we got to watch a 31 move here, but hopefully he gets some. Um, and Drake lets him steal the base if he does go. Yeah. Got away from Cohen Carter. Get that extra base. Oh, did it get out of here? Oh, it must have went out. Okay, so Cohen advances on the wild pitch and score. Well, Cohen scores, excuse me, to make it 5 nothing. And Carter advances. See in your screen here, Carter's now on second base. He advanced. So the ball went out of went out of play after the wild pitch. Yeah, correct? did it go over the net? I really couldn't tell what happened. I was trying to. It might be sitting on top of it, Coach. But that's ball one to Drake. So 1-0. Eagles up 5 nothing now. I like to see Drake put one out here. The wind's kind of changing directions a little bit. Ball two. There we go. Yeah, we got a little pitch and visit here. Go kind of talk to him, and settle him down. Yeah, Coach, uh, is Cooper's dad, John, correct? Yeah, John Scott. <laughs> so he uh, he walks out because he had to go to work. And the uh, well, next inning, Coop, won, Coop puts one right out here on the, on the perch to, to walk it off. So. so we have a pitching change here. So let's see. Who do we have? Number 23 is Tristan Hayden. So uh, – Laney up home I mean, care pitching change stop. here. Is that the yep. kid? Is that shortstop? Yep. So, so he becomes the pitcher. Your shortstop becomes the pitcher here. Uh, and let's see where Ballard goes. Uh, Ballard staying. Ballard was being DH for so. Um, it looks like. Looks like seventeen Maddox Thompson coach is going to third, and then seven. Who was at third? Keen Michelli is going to go to shortstop. Is going to shortstop. Looks like it looks like Ballard's going to be at uh, at second, maybe. So, so tell you what, let's uh let's take a break. So you're watching Eagle Baseball on Four Four Six Sports. BK Distributors is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sports. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the family. For all your spirit apparel needs and anything you need to brand your business, when you think of anything you need with your name on it, think BK. Check them out on Facebook or at bkdistrib.com. BK Distributors, apparel and promotions in Pineville. 
time for our red, white, and cool summer event at Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Right now, you can save on a new energy saving system. No money down, 0% interest, and no payments till June 2024. Call Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing or visit us online. And welcome back to Eagles Nest here where we have Tristan Hayden pitching now. And uh, looks like his new shortstop, uh, Giles, is going to – no, I'm sorry, his new shortstop is – Michelle's going to go talk to him. Maselli, not Michelle. Maselli, excuse me. So Drake Aldridge up to bat. Case Butterfield and the X mark on deck circle. One out here. Strike one. Come in and throw some strikes. Yep, so. Two one pitch, and that's a ball. Carter's going to stay at home there. So three one should have your flexi score correct. Yeah, five zero, oh, one out, three one count, bottom of the second. Right, Drake's got to look for something he can hit hard right here. Again, it's it's a mental approach, and let's see what he can he can make happen. Carter got to be ready to move right here. Something in the dirt. Clear. Three one. There we go, Drake. I don't know if that's. Uh, a little late, a little flop ball. He got underneath it a little bit. Gonna be caught. The tag by Carter. The play comes in, but yep. no play there. Cut off. So Carter advances to third on that one. So good job, Drake, getting him over. That is the second out of the inning, though. See if Case can't come up with a two out hit here to score Carter. So Hayden comes in and gets the out. Case Butterfield here with Ben Wade and your X mark on deck circle. Strike one there. So. Kid coming in throwing strikes as a coach. That's what you asked for. That's exactly right. This was moving a little bit slower than most. Uh, another strike. Now Case right here, he's kind of adjusting to it, but you, you know. He, down 0-2. Now you got to be a little defensive and hopefully put something in play and do a job. 0-2 pitch here to Butterfield. Whoo, that's, that's close, coach. That's way too close to call. You know, <laughs> as, a, as a coach right there, he just, you know, he's taking three pitches, which two of them were strikes. That one was way too close right there. You, But, you know, it's a good eye. Either way, you can look at it. He's looking for something he can hit. 1-2 here from Hayden. That's driven. Deep. That's a good shot ball there. Way to get in the gap. Yep, let's get that's down. We're going to see Mark and Taylor score. See Case Butterfield slides into second base with a two-out double. Case said, I don't need a one-swing coach. And good job there. <laughs> so now it's 6 to nothing for your Eagles here in the bottom of the – You know, and, and I know we talked about it before. The Eagles, are, we're kind of – we're swinging the bat a little bit better the last 10, 10 games or so. And what's happening in, is those balls right there, you know, at the beginning of the season we were missing those balls. We yeah. were fouling those off. You know, and that's what I, I, I tell these guys about hitting is – you know, the best way to hit an off-speed or a curveball is not to miss a fastball. Right. So when they throw you a fastball, you can't miss it. And that was a great job of not missing it. Ben Wade up the bat now with Nate Bilbo on the X mark on deck circle. Case is second base. Two outs. First pitch. That's a pop up here to the first baseman. And that's going to be your third out of the the inning, though, but uh, see Ben's hanging his head right there. Go, go out and do a job. You got, you know, offense and defense. Now, now don't let it transition over to your defense. And you know, it's a tough game. Everybody wants to have success, <laughs> and it's hard. You're watching Menard Eagle Baseball on Four Four Six Sports in Central Louisiana. You might see me at the ballparks or soccer fields, or we might cross paths at the grocery store. I'm your local Farm Bureau insurance agent, your local expert when it comes to protecting what you love and depend on. I'm Jason Hall. Learn more about how Farm Bureau Insurance can save you time and money. So talk to Hawk at 318-791-HAWK and let me help you protect your biggest investments. Real service, real people. Farm Bureau Insurance.
And we're back at Eagles Nest here at Holy Savior Menard in Alexandria, Louisiana. And uh, looks like your Lady Eagles are in the top of the second inning. Uh, no score, 0-0. Zero, zero. Playing Rose Pine, correct, Coach? I think that's thinks. who it is. I, I really hadn't been over there, but they, they've been on a hot streak. So, you know, both Eagles, Lady Eagles and the base, but baseball and softball has been kind of having a, having a very good – run here over the last 10 games yeah they have a 10 game win streak actually 11 of the last 12 and they're six and zero in district so uh yeah um and our founder doug Gann will say that coach scully is not lost since the blazing wings competition yeah, that's a good point well we need to have one of those again before the playoffs now. <laughs> so uh yeah that was a good challenge that was a fun night at Mount buffalo wild wing mike henry there with a good first pitch to go up Oh one, that was a little high. So you don't, you can't see his pitch count, can you? I am looking at it right now. He is just one second. I'll get it for you. Hit the runner there. So got a little, a little loose there. Another hit by the grip. There. Yeah. So yeah, just, he needs to make an adjustment there. I don't mind challenge inside, you know, you, you just got to can't keep giving up free bases, but Mike's, Mike's a seasoned veteran. He'll, he'll figure it out. He'll pitch us way out of it. That was Mason Giles that just got hit by the pitch. So, uh, so now we have number eight. No, I'm sorry. This is Giles with the bat. Excuse me. Bing got him. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> Green Garden pickoff there by Green Garden Nursery pickoff there by Ben Wade. Uh, yeah, he's going to. He's, you know, it, I, we keep seeing it time and time again. And Ben Wade is, uh, you know, that that makes me smile as a coach. And I'm sure Coach Jordan kind of gives him a grin because, you know, Ben just had a bad at bat or, and popped out. Or I say bad at bat. He didn't have a quality at bat. But like I said, don't let that transition to the to the defensive side. And he just made a big play. Yeah, and picked up Mike there on that up. Yes. So we're now 2 and 0 here. To, this is Giles. And uh, that was Terrence Robinson that just he got hit by a pitch and then just got picked off. 2 1 here. Good pitch there by Mike. Three one. Let's go, Mike. Settle in, buddy. Just deep breath. Now, Mike, pitch count. I have him at thirty-seven. Okay, so so he's you know so what's that? Twelve per twelve or thirteen per inning so far. So that's not bad. Ball four there. So Giles gets on base with a. But a base on balls there, and this brings up your leadoff batter, Dakota Johnson, who's also your center fielder, with Keen Maselli in your X mark on deck circle. I bet Giles is watching for this back pick. Oh yeah, whoa, he's diving back in now, Nick. I wish we could have got caught it on on camera there, but. He didn't even give him a chance. He dove back in with a <laughs> throw back to the pitcher. But that's the power of Ben Wade. You know, Dakota Johnson hitting here. I've I've um I've watched Dakota grow up. Um he's he's you know, he's a multi sport athlete, great football player. He was one of their I don't know if he was quarterback or running back, but he was definitely one of their stars on the football field, the basketball senior. Yeah. Yeah, he's a. That's he's where a, I recognize. He, he was in that uh, gridiron. That's right. All American bowl. But, but you, when you talk about a great kid and he's got a motor that runs and, and just. Oh, uh, that's trouble. Right? Let's see if Jay's got it, though. No, Jay's got it. Yep. So, but. But we'll talk more about. I call him DJ Dakota's. Is, um, DJ, um, he's great kid, great athlete, and would, would you know, really, really a coach's dream to coach because he's a multi-sport athlete to the to the highest extent. So he would possibility could steal, but I mean I know there's two outs. So, but uh, here's number seven, which is Maselli, up to bat with Hayden in your next mark on deck circle. Oh, 
Ooh. Ben tried again. That was close. Like you said, though, he's a he's a good athlete. One over there. That was a ball. Ball two. Two outs here. Top of the third. Your Eagles up six to nothing. Michael Henry on the bump. Two little pitch here. Look like that hit him, but I guess not. I thought it hit him too. I thought the so, same thing. So Johnson, DJ as you call him, is. No, I think now the, DJ flied out. I think this is. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah DJ's sorry. one that flied out. This I is think. a. That's number eight, I think. The, um, yeah, so that's, that's still. Yeah, yeah, still Giles. Okay. Okay. So Giles now on second base. It's 3 0 count to, to Maselli. And that one's to Guillory, who catches it right there in your screen. So three outs there. So no no harm done there on that uh that hit by pitch. So coach six to nothing going into the bottom of the third inning where you're you're watching Eagle Baseball 446 Sports. In central Louisiana, you might see me at the ballparks or soccer fields, or we might cross paths at the grocery store. I'm your local Farm Bureau insurance agent, your local expert when it comes to protecting what you love and depend on. I'm Jason Hall. Learn more about how Farm Bureau insurance can save you time and money. So talk to Hall at 318-791-HAWK and let me help you protect your biggest investments. Real service, real people. Farm Bureau insurance. And welcome back to the Nest here where Nate Bilbo's up the bat with uh, uh, Jake Gillery and X Mark on deck circle. Tristan Hayden still your pitcher for the Warriors. First pitch. That's a, That's a little up a little bit. Ball, huh? oh, didn't clear my ball from earlier. Got some senior parents hanging out here to ticket the admission. Well, that's a shot there by, by Nate to Great right job field. Of hitting there, Nate. See if Nate can ground. To, oh, he's not, he's not checking up. Hey, good work there by Nate. Aggressive coach. I know you like that coming like around that. first. That ball slowed down in the grass going towards right field, and uh, man, he well, made the best of it. Well, the only way you get one of them is right there is you got to run that hard out of the box, and Nate did. He didn't, he didn't slack up going in the first, and then he turned another gear on. Great job by the Nate. So Jay Guillory up the bat, and the last, his last at bat, he hit a, a rocket straight towards us. So I know his walk-up song, Thrift Store. <laughs> Strike one there to, to Jay. So great way to start off this bottom half of this inning by, by Nate. Yeah, Nate, Nate's actually had a great year. You know, being a first-time starter, I know we returned a lot of seniors from last year, and Nate was a, a, a good way to stay back on that ball, Jay. Great job there. Cool. And I see he's Nate's gonna... probably, Nate got a late jump on it. He kind of had to make sure it was getting down. And um, Way to take second base on that, Jay. Yeah, that's where you got to hit your cutoff, man. <laughs> yep, <laughs> you know? yep, yep. It, it, it matters. You know, it's good to try to show off that arm, but it matters. 
Um, <coughs> talking about Nate again, Nate was a kid that was a, you know, he had spot start time last year, and, and he spent a lot of off time working his butt off and for his senior year, and he, you know, he earned a starting job at third base, and, you know, it, it was some growing pains early on, but he's, he's got into the groove and playing like he's capable of, and he's, you know, a big part of our success. Nothing little, happened in there, no, but a uh, little, little action. I yeah. think um, we got that new what, part of that. Nick is that new home of the Eagles backstop back there is brand new this year, and it's actually got a little, little, little bit more sponge, little sponge, little trampoline effect. It gets back a little quicker. Gotcha. We we've um, tell you it was big that Jay didn't didn't run up on no, Nate Jay, there. Jay did. He he kind of put the brakes on. Ball two there. So Gavin's up two zero here. Um, Six nothing Eagles on top. He's in the wind up, so probably more comfortable that way. Strike there, so now two and one. So Nate started us off with a double. Then Jay has a single and then advanced to second on on the, the ball that went over on, the on the throw. On the throw. Misses cut off and yep. now we got a chance to put, you know. Base hit here, score two. Jay's got great speed at second base. Gavin was looking out here to see where it landed, Coach. <laughs> yeah, it was a little swing and miss. He was, he was trying to get three at one time. Yeah, yeah. Now with two strikes, he needs to do a job. He needs, you know, they play him back on the right side right here. So, a ground ball to the right side is going to score us a run. So, this is um, – Good eye there. Good eye. Makes it full. Full. Kind of stay within yourself here and do a job. So it's got to be a fastball, probably, huh? Oh, yeah. Gavin's been, yeah, been seeing the ball pretty well, too. So we'll see what happens. 3 2 pitch here to Hilton. Ball Good four. Good take there. Now you get Cooper Scott with the bases loaded. That's what I'm talking about. Louisiana Land Bank based on balls there. Uh, base is full now with. Hilton at first, Guillory at second, and Nate Bilbo on third. And Cooper Scott up the bat. Yeah, well, Cooper didn't have a quality at bat last time, but this is where you spit those out and you, um, you know, brand new day here. It, this is his chance to bust this wide open. And yeah, nowhere to put him. Yeah. Going to see the play here at home, and Nate slides in safely, and everybody else advances. See Guillory in your screen there at third, and. Gavin advances to second there on the wild pitch. Yeah. So makes that seven nothing your Eagles up now. So tonight um, we had a a new addition to four four six sports, uh, LCU and LSUA women's softball doubleheader or softball doubleheader. Strike one there to Coop, so one and one. So Doug's out there doing that. I'm assuming he has Chuck with him. I didn't get a chance to look. I was a little nervous about getting everything set up here. But uh, please uh, like and share um, all of our broadcast from 446 Sports. Ooh. I fooled him on that one, Coach. Coop's getting a little aggressive there, but that's okay. I like the aggressiveness. All these broadcasts you can see on Facebook on 446 Sports. You can see on YouTube or you can watch, you can look on our website, 446sports.com. Please subscribe. It's free. And on YouTube, they're there forever. One two pitch here. Riverside Hospital foul ball straight back. Way to battle there, Coop. Yep, yeah, Coop was on that. He threw him a little off speed pitch and Coop stayed on it. Wasn't too far out front and he got a piece of it, so stayed alive. Also want to say our thoughts and prayers are with Chuck and his family. Chuck lost his mom last week, and they laid her to rest today. Riverside Hospital foul ball there. So she was fighting dementia, coach, for, for a number of years, and Lord decided to take her home last week. So Chuck said that he had, that she had pretty much, you know, lost, you know, pretty much of where she was at. So here's the one, two. Shot here to up the right, good play go. there. Right up the middle, that's going to score. Jay and Gavin. 
Great job, Cooper. And Coop advances on the <clears throat> on the throw again, Coach. So, got to hit that cutoff, man. Of course, well, I mean, it's in our favor. So, that was a uh, one-two pitch. He but fought off. He had two foul balls. Yeah, great team at bat there. Just didn't try to do too much. Stayed in the middle of the field and got a you know, hard ground ball bouncing through the middle and scored two runs. So. Cohen LaRue up to bat with Carter Markentiel next mark on deck circle. Man, we have lost our walk-up songs, Coach. I don't know what's going on. Well, if we hit triples and we hit the ball like that, I wouldn't play them no more if I'd be <laughs> Coach Jordan. Uh, Cooper Scott. Cooper's gone second. He's going to advance here to third. Ooh, made a little – you're right about that backstop, Coach. That made it a little closer. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Um, um, Casey's dad, Eddie Butterfield, did maybe way too good of a job putting that rascal up there, <laughs> pulling it real tight. It's got a trampoline effect on it. 1-0 here to LaRue. Ball two. Nine to nothing. Here in the bottom of the third. A few shadows still on the field you could see. That sun's setting in the west, and that wind has pretty much stopped. Strike there on the curve ball, so two and one, Cohen. Well, you got no outs right here, nine, nothing. Just, just stay within yourself, do a job. Your late Eagles are winning 2 nothing in the bottom of the second. That'll do the job. Shot coming out here. Carlton, you're going to see the play at the plate where Coop slides in safely there and make it 10 nothing. So good work there by, by LaRue. Now you see Carter Markentil in your screen there up the bat with uh, – Drake Aldridge next mark on deck circle. So So yeah, we have uh, one out in the bottom of the second inning there and your Lady Eagles up 2 nothing. You can see the scoreboard from here. Ball one there to Carter. I was picking on coach Scully, Drew Scully. Saying that I think the I think the softball team's playlist is better than the baseball team's, my opinion. So 2 0 here to Carter. So Carter put a charge in one uh during St. Louis. Was the second game at St. Louis? And um Yeah, he did. He ball three. This is his third at bat with a three oh count. Tristan Hayden, 3-0 to Carter Markentale here. Ball four there, Louisiana Land Bank base on balls there for Markentale. So Drake Aldridge up the bat now with uh, Case Butterfield and the X mark on deck circle. First pitch to Drake, the ball. They're being very selective. They're not chasing nothing up, which, you know, that's good at bats. I've been impressed with the Menard hitters' approaches tonight. And me to be impressed with them says a lot, too, because I'm sometimes their toughest critic, and they they really doing a good job of laying off some bad pitches and hitting in sequence. That's a great hit there by Drake. Yep, see that up the middle there? Hit the ball just down and just it. drive it right back up the middle. Good job of hitting by Drake there. Man, I probably could have stayed on the A&A pitch can. Nah, the net probably wouldn't have gotten it. But, I mean, that is textbook hitting right there, Coach. I mean, textbook. Yeah, ball got – he let the ball up high, let go, and got one down that he can handle, and he stayed on it and did a good job just hitting it right back where it came from. Case up to bat now with Ben Wade in your X mark on deck circle. Mark and tail on second. Aldridge on first. Your pitch, he gets hit, so – Butterfield got hit there. Yep. 
So bases loaded now, one out. Now Drake Aldridge. No, I'm sorry, Ben Wade up the bat with uh, with Nate Bilbo on the X mark on deck circle. We have Officer Causey joins us. <laughs> Oh, wow, they just went up 6 nothing. Okay, softball's now up 6 nothing in the bottom of the second. I had them at 2 nothing. All right, Ben Wade, let's go. Have a deep breath right here. Have a good approach. Yeah, second one. He, he, hadn't had, he, had, he needs to spit them out and get two, two good ones here. Oh, here we there go. There we go, Ben. That's the way to drive it. Good run there. Going to see... Carter come in the score there to go up 11 nothing. Good sacrifice fly there by, by Ben. We're going to bring in Officer Causey here. I got a question for him. So maybe, you there? Maybe I'll have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> was your trip to Starksville as bad as, well, the baseball games? I went up to Fayetteville and watched Friday, Saturday. And I didn't have that much fun. How was your trip to Stark, Stark, Stark was, Vegas? Starkville was great. I'll, yeah. I'll definitely go back. I've heard some stories about Fayetteville. So. I don't know if I would ever go watch a game, football, baseball there, though. I've heard too many war stories from, uh, from Tiger fans. Actually, I was there with, with Arkansas fans, wore my LSU stuff, and they were great. Yeah. Now, that was baseball, but they were great. Of course, they were winning, but uh, two of my customers <laughs> up well – I have a customer up there, Frank Sherm's Garden Center, and uh, and his manager at, a, at a, another location, uh, Jacob Hart and his wife, uh, Michelin. They they were great hosts, um, you know, and uh, really really welcomed us and everything. And uh, we had a we had a good time. But the baseball part, although we competed, boy, it was rough. It was, it was LSU. They're hard to watch right now. They they're are. Just, they're struggling, but. I mean, when you lose seven of the quality players that they lost from last year's team, you're going to go through some bumps and bruises along the way. You're exactly right. And I think the, the biggest issue I'm seeing, Chris, is that leadership. And I'm not talking about coaching leadership. I'm talking about player leadership. Right. And, and that's something that is very difficult to replace as well. That's what I was listening to Coach Johnson last night after the <laughs> yes. Southern game. And you could tell he was, he was fed up to – his eyeballs, because he said, and that was one of his main questions, or main concerns when he got questioned was the leadership. And he said, right now, we don't have any. Yeah, he said it, uh, it's Full a privilege. Captain Nate here. Let's see what Nate can do. It's Nate a privilege to start. Oh, sorry. So, oh, that's a tough hop there. And that's what he said. It's a privilege to play baseball at LSU. It's not a right. That's right. That's correct. So, that, uh, that statement alone, that already opened some eyes from some of the guys on the team. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, so uh, Nate gets on on the error there. Well, what, 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 did you consider an error? Would you consider a hit? Error. error. Okay. Give him an error. Okay. So you see, Jake Guillory up to bat, and uh, Gavin Hilton, your X mark on deck circle. Still one out. Base is loaded now. Oh, that ball goes over. So that's ball one. So, uh, and uh, so we have Aldridge at third, and Ben. So, no, Case Butterfield at second and Nate Bilbo on first. Drake's just wanting to steal home right here. <laughs> oh, foul ball there, Riverside Hospital foul ball. Now one and one. So, um, so you here for tonight and then you get to kind of relax the rest of the week? I got softball tomorrow. They're softball playing, tomorrow, okay. They're doing a doubleheader with Glenmore tomorrow. It wasn't supposed to, it wasn't on the schedule, but. They moved it here, so they're just going to do a doubleheader tomorrow at 5 and 7. But that's my last last time coming to the Holy Savior for the Easter break. Gotcha. I'll be going Ooh. to Baton Rouge Thursday, Friday, so. Saturday, watch hopefully some good baseball against Vanderbilt. Yes, that, that'll be a – Look like the weather's going to be nice. So. Yeah. Softball just went up 7 nothing over there. So, yeah, we were talking about how they're on a 10-game win streak right now, the softball team and – and uh, ooh. there's your chance, Drake. You, you missed yep. it. But like we were saying earlier, both the the preseason schedules before district, both their schedules that they play, I mean, it just makes them better for district in the playoffs. Right. Because neither one of them, baseball or softball, plays an easy pre-district schedule. Two-two here. 
Ball three. You That's know the thing about that? Jay to hold off on that one. Thing about that, Chris, it's it is great. It's a great for, for competition and everything, but it just you have to have a mature ball club oh, yeah. to do that. Because because when people start questioning your your results early, oh, yeah. but but obviously you know Coach Jordan's team's very mature. Coach Scully's team's very mature. Everybody so. moving. A little foul ball back here. Yeah, you got hospital foul ball. Oh six, oh and seven. Softball started like I don't know maybe one and eight, two and nine, something like that. You can't hear it all, Coach. How about that? Is that better? Okay. Whenever I pulled the, the cord there, I, I – oh, Riverside Hospital foul ball there again. Uh, foul ball. Drake's getting a good workout here. <laughs> getting, his, getting his calisthenics in back and forth. We're going we're gonna to stay here to follow Cam so, so you all can see. What's happening right here for the ones that don't kind of understand, with, you know, it's a full count, two outs, um, runners are in motion, so Drake's kind of staying wide where he doesn't get hit by a foul ball, so – that's kind of the, everybody's in the move, and oh, there's another foul ball. <laughs> so Drake's making the circle. Come on back, Drake. So everybody can see that. And another part of baseball that's very interesting. So we'll go back today in a yeah. pitch cam here. As a runner, you just got to make sure the pitcher goes to the plate and you don't get picked off. But once yes. he commits to the plate and you're in motion and – well, with him being in the windup, can he throw to? No, not once he steps okay. off. Watch, I can tell you, watch here. When he – oh, oh he must be coming and talking to him. I have a little visit here from the mound, I believe. Yeah, coach. From now, if he steps there. off with his right foot, he can throw to third. But if he, as soon as he does, toes the rubber and comes back with his left foot, he's, he's committed to the plate. Okay. Yeah, you're watching that right foot as a base runner. But That's talking, the thing. Getting, getting that back to Nick, I know you were talking about the power ratings and this and that. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword. You know, some people, some coaches, you know, play the game and they schedule and, you know, it's, and, and you really want to try to find a balance. There's not yeah. a right or a wrong. There's just a different approach to it. But, you know, um, I guess I can get on my soapbox here and talk about, I think some stuff that's abused. It's one of the things that I really don't like is the play up point situation where, you know, you get two points for every class you play up and, you know, LHSA goes by divisions, classes. I don't know what they go by half the time, but, you know, a two-point play up, it's, it's almost like if you can – you need to figure out a way to cap that to where, you know, you don't have 5A schools going and playing B schools and just, just for strictly PowerPoint purposes. 3-2 Three, Three, pitch, right, ball, ball four. four. So that's going to be an RBI for, for Jay. Which yeah, went, advance. You know, the, the coach came out and had a little talk with him. He, he had pitch. He went from the stretch. Yeah. I guess he wanted to save that big lead that's right. from second, Ex first exactly. and second. Well, on, 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 yeah, tell him to go from the stretch because that kid's almost the first kid running from first, almost uh, almost at second. He's, yeah, he's at second. Butterfield was almost at third by the time the ball got to the plate. Yeah, Gavin healed up the bat. And Riverside yeah. Hospital foul ball. Gavin and, uh, taking big hacks. Good there. swing right there. Just Co missed it. Cooper Scott and your X mark on deck circle. We had a um, we had a, a, a starting pitcher um, my senior year, and he threw everything out the stretch. He never did a wind up. There's a shot coming out this way. Let's see what happens here. Left fielder, Cam Sutter. So that's going to be the third out of the inning there. But uh, Eagles do really well. The Eagles are up 12 nothing going into the top of the fourth inning. You're watching Menard Eagle Baseball and 446 Sports. At Certified Transmission, you can count on our certified mechanics with over 35 years' experience to get your vehicle fixed right and get you back on the road. Got transmission problems? Time for our red, white, and cool summer event at Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Right now, you can save on a new energy saving system. No money down, 0% interest, and no payments till June 2024. Call Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing or visit us online. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier, transactions are getting safer, and you have access 24-7. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today.
<laughs> and we're back here at the Eagles Nest. Uh, and um, so Mike Henry on the mound. We're in the top of the fourth. So let's let's talk about that a little bit more, guys. We were talking about it over the break, and uh, you know, you brought a good point to you and Coach Lacasse from uh, from Rapids, Coach. Yeah, we were just talking about you know. The, there's no way to balance or there's not a, you know, right or wrong. I guess, I guess there is. LHSA has different rules. And what, as a, as a soccer coach, you know, every, everybody's power point system is different. So it's kind of hard to figure out what, what goes with what, but um, I really would like something in place. Or Coach LeCaz was actually brought up a great, great thing. Me and him was talking the other day about maybe we do something to where you get you know, instead of play up points of B schools playing five A schools, maybe we, if you play somebody in your class that's in a different district, you know, you, you get a, a bonus points or some type of structure to give them extra points for encouraging them to play each other within class across, you know, geogra geographic boundaries. You know, maybe a South Louisiana school goes play somebody in Monroe or something. There's a shot back up the middle there and Jaden with the catch. I like how he threw the hat off there before yeah. he caught it. I, I don't, that, was, that was a nice little turn and run by Jaden to make a play. So we have Jaden uh, Williams here on your screen. Jaden comes in and replaces Jake Guillory at center field. So uh, I I'm, I'm glad they did that. That way we can. Um, good job there by him. So, Coach, you know, I mean, of course, you and I are both. You know, of course, I'm not coaching anymore, but soccer coaches and we we didn't have the the luxury of having the the play up point no <laughs> there were play up points exactly. so uh and around here it's like you're talking about i mean you pretty much almost everyone for us would be play up points except for our district so uh so what well, kind of advantage it's, it's, what kind of advantage would that be yeah you know and, and as long as it's a competitive game that's what no. i'm getting i'm not saying a small school can't play with a, with a 5a school but but it needs to be a competitive matchup you know right. it's, um Hit there. Base hit up the middle. Yep. yep. So that's uh that's the first baseman there, if I'm not mistaken, who is uh Braden Strother. So because uh no, I'm sorry, that's not him. So yeah, it was yeah, it was a Braden Strother. Yeah, that was number six. Yep. So Denver Daniels is up to bat now with Maddox Thompson, the X mark on deck circle. So and um, you know, talking about that, coach, we have a. Uh, you know, you, you get these competitive games like you're talking about in your class. Mm. I mean, how how beneficial would that be to both? That's a strike there. Well, for it's competitive games within your class, but that's that's who you're going to see in the playoffs. Right. Exactly. You know I mean, that's who you're going to see. So, mm -hmm. if it's about challenging and 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 getting power points, let's let's figure out a way to give them bonus points for doing that. Good pitch there, by Mike, on the curveball. So, but again, that's. We could say that's just an idea. We could debate we that. We could all debate night. this topic. Oh yeah. Till this time next week, and still not come up with a good answer or solution. Yeah, oh, we've got. I've, I've got all the answers, guys. Y'all know that when it comes to <laughs> not just playing, but a uh, foul ball there. No, but you are correct. And I think the the thing that's crazy and is it uniformity? Is that the word I'm looking for? I mean, let's just make it all uniform. You know, if you're going to have just divisions and and multiple sports. Then just do divisions in all sports. If you're gonna have classes, then do classes. I mean, that that's the that's the one thing I think would be would be nice. Um, yeah, because look here, we got a division three and a division four team playing each other right now in the same district. Right. Yeah. I don't know where that ball missed, but that's the first ball to have bat. So one two. Yeah, I mean, I, I went to look for Oakdale's, you know, uh, power ratings, and I, of course I look at division three non-select, you know, because. We're Division Three select, and you know, had to go look at Division Four. Got good him. Pitch, Mike. Good pitch. Sabine State Bank strike out there for Henry, for out number two of the inning. So um, I think that might have been the best fastball, Mike. He's found that that was the best fastball on the inside half of the plate right there. That was a great pitch. And we got Thompson up, right? Yep. Here. Yep. Thompson's up the bat. Your second baseman with Horn in your X mark on deck circle. Strother still at first base. First pitch from Henry. Ball. Nice pickup. That was a nice pickup by Ben. So Ben's. Ben's thrown two out in the first two innings. Yeah, he's picked one all. He's back pick one, Chris, when you were watching softball, I think. And then he threw one out at third here on a steal yeah, call steal. Okay. Yeah, that was in the first inning. Oh, that's tough. That's going to be a wild pitch there. So Strother's going to advance the second. Now he's in scoring position. and. 
H2O here to here to uh, Thompson. What score? We score seven nothing here in the top of the third for the Lady Eagles. Right, we got two outs here. We've got a 2-0 count. Yep, 2-0. Softball, Glenmore is in the district still. Just yep. okay. So that, got, they'll play Glenmore doubleheader here tomorrow, okay. starting at five. Anybody want to come out and watch the game? I think that might be the last home game. You know, it's got to be a hit. I mean, there's just nothing really. Yeah, there's nothing more you could do right there. Yeah. I didn't. I guess I couldn't. I was looking at honestly, guys. I'm not used to a three-man crew. I was looking at the guy at second base to make a call. I he was never, too, because he, he never made one, and then I forgot we had a run, we had an umpire on first base that made yeah, the call. I was, yeah, I was waiting for the guy in the middle to call the play, and because yeah. I was blocked by Gavin, he was blocking That's, the first base umpire. I said, "Well, I don't know if he's going to make a call or not." Yeah, yeah, that's just a, the same thing. I was like, what, what just happened? Yeah, it was out of reach of Henry and just, I mean, too soft for yeah. either Cohen or Gavin yeah, to really Cohen, get a beat Cohen on. Cohen made it close, but that's, yeah. that's all you can do with that play. Strike one there. That's a good start. We got a first and third situation here. I'm anxious to see what um, Oakdale's going to try to run it and let's see if Coach Marks we throw him out in second. I'm anxious to see what's going to happen. Trying to. The kids got an aggressive lead at first. There he goes. Try to throw at him. Good. I like it. I think Mike's got to take a, a quick peek over there because he had a big lead. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to throw at him. But did he call it a strike or did he call it a – I am still. he called it a strike. I thought so too. So, that would be 0-2, right? 0-2. Yeah. See if our – Still got the shutout in place here. I don't want to jinx nothing. I have no hitter, so I'm not jinxing anything. So, let's – Nice pitch. Got him. Good Sabine job, State man. Bank strike Mike. out there for the nice third curveball. third out of that inning. And uh, so we go to the home half of the fourth inning with your Eagles up 12 nothing. You're watching Menard Baseball on 446 Sports. Welcome back to the nest here on the campus of Holy Savior Menard in Alexandria, Louisiana, where you have up to bat right now is going to be Cooper Scott with Cohen LaRue and your X mark on deck circle. And uh, guys, 12 nothing. It's kind of, you know, been a really good game here for the Eagles. Uh, hit the ball well, pitched well, defended well, and, uh, you know, good, good coming off of what, four days of? Four-day break. Yeah. Probably a much-needed break because it's a busy time of the year. I know for it is for the guys because I know it's busy for me, too. <laughs> I needed a break. <laughs> so, and, uh, oh, here we go. Let's see if we can have some good approaches, good at-bats here. First pitch, Coop. Ball one outside. So, uh, it's like we're still rolling well with the – Pitch cam's nice. Yeah. A and A pitch cam there, but we got it. Looks like coach coming out to talk to him. And wonder if we're going to see our third pitcher here. It's kind of, yeah. Pro probably what's happening right here is he's probably saving arms. You know, you throw, I don't know the kids' pitch count, but you can throw, you know, saving 30, arms you, for Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, you can throw 35 pitches or less and still pitch on next day or so. So that's, that's probably what coach, um, coach Robinson's doing here. He's, he's, um, Making, no. making a decision. Back when me and you were playing, there was no pitch count. There was <laughs> there was lots of uh, lots of pitches thrown by starting pitchers. 
Nothing like, like a, a nothing like, like a person pointing at the, nothing like a person pointing at the cop calling saying he's trouble, huh? That's right. <laughs> Uh, he, uh, he gets away with a little bit since he's wearing that Tiger jersey, right, yeah, right, Chris? That's, that's, uh, Eric Collins, he's, oh, he cool. works for us. He's a lieutenant on the line division <laughs> here watching baseball. We need, he get, we need to get Eric up here on this mic. He, he was he'd a student. Fun. He was one of my students at Rapids when I was there. Okay. So it kind of makes you, makes you feel old when your uh, former students are working for you <laughs> for the same department you're working for. Well, Coach Collins is here. I can tell you what it is. Coach Collins, you talk about a, a, a great guy and oh, uh, yeah. invest in the youth and He's here. Um, I know he's here watching. I, we was talking about DJ um, Johnson earlier. DJ played travel ball growing up with Coach Collins. Coach Collins coached Aces baseball, and Cohen played. And me and Eric actually started coaching um, T-ball together. And and we um, we we st way back. But what I'm getting at is Eric's coming out here to not watch his own kids. He's going to come out here and watch some kids that he coached. He yep. coached Cohen, and he coached um, this whole age group right here. He was involved with a lot of his development and. And I know from Oakdale, he coached two of the kids, um, DJ and um, and the Daniels kid. Okay. They played for him for uh, Alexander Aces. And okay. Coach put a lot of blood, sweat, and I would say tears and joy in that bunch. And he, he did an outstanding job teaching them how to be good men. So, Maselli now up to, to pitch for the Warriors, and that's a strike there. So, one and one. And uh, so, he goes – he comes from short to, to pitch, and then Hayden goes – to short, so they just switched. One one pitch here, and that one's low, so now two and one. So the Aces, that was a, a travel ball team? Yeah, he okay. had the Aces elite. Two one pitch. Three one, it looks like now. Yeah, Coach Collins' um, um, stepson, really his son, um, Christopher um, Clark. Play was um, played with him, and, and Christopher graduated from Ash last year. He's an outstanding baseball player and athlete, and, um, and he um, he's actually playing um, played JUCO baseball at Arkansas at the time. Oh, cool. Arkansas, they were at they, they were at LSU, LSU this yeah, weekend. They, they got to go watch him play three games close to home. Cool. Co Cohen Larue up to bat now with Case uh, with Carter Marcantel and UX Mark on deck circle, and. Cooper Scott with your Louisiana Land Bank base on balls there. First pitch to Cohen. It's like a strike there. So looks like uh, Maselli has a little more velo than the first two, from what I can tell from here. No one pitch. That's ball. So that's a good pitch there. He had some good arm, arm action with that. He, he you know he, he took something off, but his arm action stayed the same. So. That was really good for Cohen to lay off of that and stay balanced. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming we may see him on Thursday is what I'm kind of – I don't know what other arms they have, but this kid here's got a good arm. Ball there, two and one. He's trying to keep it low. Yep. Um, so, a school, Oakdale, they're 2A. I didn't look that part up. So, they're 2A, yeah. which means they're, what, probably between 200 and 400 students? Yeah, I think. So I don't know exactly what the number is. Ball three, so three and one. Uh, I know they don't have four. Well, if they're considered division they're considered four, division four they're, they're smaller they're than they're us. They're smaller so. than us, which we're like at, what, 220, 230 uh, in high school? So they would probably have to be around 200, under 200 to be considered division four. I got you. I'm going to say it so Dad doesn't have to, but that was probably ball four. <laughs> I like the aggressiveness of the 12-0 lead. Do you understand? Yep. <laughs> and we would have that conversation. <laughs> As we had one the other night. Oh, they could, could, had to lay off that one. Yeah. So, Colin LaRue with Louisiana Land Bank based on balls. So. No, I'll tell off of myself. We had that conversation. I don't remember which game it was. It was a game we were up pretty big, and he got hit by a pitch and didn't get out of the way, and we had a big lead, and I was like, you know, I uh, it was a good conversation at home, but, um, <laughs> but he, yeah, I was like, um, but you know, sometimes you got to have team at bat. Sometimes you got to try to, but that, that's a good, that's a good at bat right there. Carter Markintel up now with Drake Aldridge next mark on deck circle. Riverside Hospital foul ball right there to third baseman. So that's gonna be a first strike. Checking the softball scoreboard, they just put five up in the bottom of the third to go up twelve nothing over Rose Pine. I was right, so I thought it was Rose Pine. So. 
That's good stuff over there by the Lady Eagles. The Lady Eagles, we, if they hold on, that'll be 11 in a row. They've won. Good time to be playing your best softball, baseball, going into the playoffs in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I need to ask Coach Gully, would he prefer 11 in a row or 12 out of 13? Or do you think it would really matter? Uh, <laughs> with Coach Gully, I would say it would matter. <laughs> He told me it was funny. He That's loves ball to too. win. He don't like to lose. Yeah. He, he drove by, and I'm setting stuff up, and he says, don't mess it up, Nick. Don't mess it up. <laughs> so, I like the competitiveness. Ball three there, so three and one here to Carter Markentil. Wind's blowing in a little bit now. I was fixing to say, we have a turn. On us a little yeah, bit. I guess. kind of picked up a little bit. I guess with that uh, – Kind of blowing left to right a little bit. From the press box, right to left from out here, huh? Maybe. Let's see. 3-1 here to Carter. That's a pop-up over there to the first baseman, and he brings it in for out number two. So No, out number one, excuse me. So have Cohen and Cooper... Cooper on second, Cohen still on first, one out. Drake Aldridge up to bat with uh, Case Butterfield next mark on deck circle. If Drake's seeing it real good right now, so let's let's can just continue seeing it, stay calm, and just look for you something to hit hard, Drake. And Officer Causey is correct. It is now blowing in, so it is Riverside Hospital foul ball there, so it is blowing Left to right from you know, our direction. I don't know direction. how much we talk about all this, but, you know, Drake Aldridge, he's a Louisiana, you know, he's an LC commit, and we've got an LSUE commit on, on, on second base, and Cohen's on first, which Cohen's going to go to Centenary. And, um, you know, the, the very, very talented group of minority Eagles here, and, um, and that's just the ones that's on base right now. And, and you know, I know it's I'm out. Several others that's committed to play baseball yeah. somewhere. I know – Case Butterfield's going to a junior college up in Arkansas. Yeah, I've got. He's going out to California. Yeah, I actually have the list right here. So we have Drake is going to uh, tell CU baseball. Ben is going to College of the Desert in California. Uh, Mike Henry is going to LCU to play football. Cohen Centenary College in Shreveport. Case is South Arkansas University Tech. And Jaden, last we had heard, John Melvin University. And Cooper, LSUE. Oh, oh we got Drake. Yep. Uh, Drake's hit look there. Bad look at uh, Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the backup catcher there, man? Now we, you need to put him on the soccer field, coach. The way he trapped that bat. Who's the, who's the uh, that's, catcher right that's, there? That's Asher Davis. Num Asher oh, it was Asher. Yeah. Come on, Donovan, man. We need him on the soccer field, man. The way he trapped that uh <laughs> that bat that Drake just tossed that way. So uh, base is loaded now for Case Butterfield, and uh, you know Case has been known to put it out here by the perch. So Chase, he was very picky last time. So let's see if he can a little aggressive, get something he can drive and hit it hard. There you oh. go. I don't know how hard. Uh, yeah, that wind's going to knock, knock that, one, that down. one down. Right fielder makes the play, but that's going to score Cooper. You see Cooper come in your screen. Yeah. And, uh, Cohen takes Cohen. third base on the, on the deep fly ball. So. Let me tell you something, guys. We were, <laughs> we were watching the game the other night, and uh, – for people out there who just kind of lounge, you know, loaf into to home plate, there was a sacrifice, sacrifice fly that Arkansas, ooh, that wind is blowing now. It's picking up now. So, sacrifice fly that Arkansas hit. Guy uh, from third kind of jogs in. Guy from second tags up and and. LSU guns him out at third. Well, the out was before. The third out yeah, was before we he crossed. Watching, yeah. Now, I will say, he he probably was safe, but he probably did beat it. But, man, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a teachable moment there, you okay. know. Yeah, I saw Van Horn went out there and yep. questioned that a little bit. Yeah, and Van Horn also. Yeah, because you could tell that he let up. Yep. The one running from third to home. But that, that run didn't matter that weekend. So, <laughs> but in a close ball game, yes. one run can make a difference. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, uh, my customer who, my customer who sits in Dave Van Horn's family. What's that? Is that score is thirteen nothing right now? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, Ronnie Rance. Whoa, Good play ben, there by the first there. baseman, but there you go, Ben Wade. Way to find a way to get on base. Now, question: That scores Cohen. Question: Is that a hit? Or is that uh, a, it's got to be a hit because yeah, there really was no um, base hit RBI. I mean, yeah, because I, the, I would call that a, a, a almost like a push bun almost. But well, the, it, went, it was yeah, the, the first baseman. The pitcher didn't cover. No, he didn't. I mean, the pitcher didn't cover. So yeah. you know, Nate Butterfield up the bat here with a. Uh, if you could give mental errors in baseball, there'd be a lot, <laughs> a lot of errors given out. Bat, batting averages would definitely be lower. Yeah. Tell you what, that wind is now wind is picking up. Picked up. It's comfortable. It makes it a lot, lot more manageable out here. But let's go, Nate. Nate got that big in started a while ago. Let it off with a double, and then we kind of capitalized on that. that um, I guess that was the third in. But uh, we got a courtesy runner for Ben over there. I didn't catch who it was, Coach. I think it's Matthew Hicks. Ball three there. Yeah, yeah Matthew Hicks. Number 11. Yeah, it's Matthew. Um, so my customer sits in, in Dave Van Horn's family seats because the family sits in the, in the box. And uh, he told me after Sunday, uh, Saturday, he said, Dave told him that he's going to get me season tickets because they're 2-0 oh whenever I'm up there. So, so I said, that was kind of a backwards compliment, I guess. But uh, there's a ball four there, so we're gonna load up the bases did, again. You didn't, you didn't join in with calling the hogs, did you? Uh, no, I did not. But uh, look, 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 now y'all gonna make me start getting excited. Like I went to watch LSU when, when we used to play Arkansas and Little Rock, you know, back in okay. back in you're the talking 90s, about football, football, yeah. you know, yeah. day after Thanksgiving, and man, that calling. I know everybody's got their own little quirks and fan bases, but that calling the hogs is something else. Yeah, um, I recorded the, the first one, but whenever we – so it was the ball? Yeah, I, I recorded the first one. Uh, and then after – here we go, we have a coach coming in. So, uh, so yeah, I recorded the first call on the hogs while we were there. And then, uh, <laughs> and then once they went up and uh, they changed – they brought in Heron for for what Holman. Was the, what was the potato thing? I, I never did. You that ever, was yes, I yes, I, I yeah, and, I, and I, potatoes. Yeah. I, and I never. That's in the general admission, the general admission seats, and um, and he's one of the very first ones to show up. I mean, they show up sometime like for this game for this weekend. I mean, they show up. 12, 15 hours before okay. because it's first come first serve. They have a general admission section. You bring you bring your own chairs. If you want a chair, you bring your own drinks, can be alcohol. I mean, $10. That's okay. what it is at Mississippi State. You sure. bring your own chairs, uh, little ice chest. got to be a certain size, 10 by 10 ice chest. But. And he just, he just, one of the students, he just brought that one day, and it just stuck. I mean, it just stuck. Um, okay. Baseball's that. The caps, the, 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 beer, the beer mug cap, that's for when bases are loaded. Good that's shot a shot there, there by Jaden. Let's go. He got a late break. Yep, that's going to get down let's there. Go, Jayden. Let's run. That's going to clear the bases. On, oh, Jaden trips. Come on, come on. Over first, but uh, you're going to see Nate come in there to your screen, so that clears the bases there. Great job, so. Jaden. Way to stay on that ball and hit the. That's <laughs> maybe one of the hardest hit balls all night. Yep, that yeah. first base goes. Got him on first base over there. Yes, did, did he, the sniper got him. The turf him. monster. Yeah, the sniper <laughs> turf monster. Yep. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt say he maybe ran into the first baseman, but I really didn't see it. No, so. no. He, he it was, yeah. Got it, that, it reached up and got him. Yep. Turf monster got him. So. And feet were moving fast. So we're at 16 nothing now here in. The, Gavin uh, Hilton. The football press box sniper might have got him over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one that the, you don't want to watch the film with your buddies. <laughs> no, because you know you're going to get some ribbon. That's right. Ball one there. We have started to cool off a little bit, gentlemen. Yeah, it looks like that's, that little front's moving in. Yeah. Just to remind everybody, you know, 446 um, tomorrow is going to be a big, big, big game for these minority Eagles. They go across across the river and take on Tioga. And, um, Tioga, you know, Coach Monty and Coach Hall and Coach Davis and, and um, crew do a really great job with Tioga baseball. And they, you know, always one of the better programs in the area, if not the best, um, for the last 
several years, and um, you know, it's going to be a big game. It's going to be a big game tomorrow, so y'all come out and support. And that I one think, is. I think varsity is at 5:30. That is at War 10. Yeah, so War 10. Yep. We're going to take a break. You're watching Minority Eagle Baseball on 446 Sports. BK Distributors is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sports. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the family. For all your spirit apparel needs and anything you need to brand your business, when you think of anything you need with your name on it, think BK. Check them out on Facebook or at bkdistrib.com. BK Our mobile banking app, is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier, transactions are getting safer, and you have access 24 seven. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. What kind of airplane is that? A, is that a C five Hercules we have in the? If it if it ain't a pot, I don't know what it is. That's only aluminum stuff. I know it's. A... It looks like it's just floating right there in the air, <laughs> but it's probably going at least two or three hundred miles an hour. Yeah. Use from the ballpark. Here we go, Mike. Let's have a good inning here. Yeah, Mike Henry still in the dish. Strike one there. Good job so there, Mike. Mike's done a good job tonight. He's thrown strikes. Let his defense play behind him. That's all you can ask for. Robinson up to bat with Giles and your X mark on deck circle. Let's strike number two there. So, man, got all kinds of stuff in the, on the perch here from the trees. Riverside Hospital foul ball there. So, Thompson's battling. The Warriors have to score seven here, correct, gentlemen, to, to keep this one alive? The top of the fifth here. Who's that we got batting, Nick? I can't see it. This number is Thompson. Two. Number two. Number yeah, Thompson two. with Giles up to 0-2 pitch here. Ooh, a little high. First ball. A little up and in. Change the eye level. Come back with a good breaking ball. See if that's the route. You sure that's take. Some, two's not Robinson? I'm sorry. I thought I had Is it Robinson? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm sorry, Robinson. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to. It's hard to read this. Now it's gotten dark. Uh, it's yes, Robinson. Ball. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> Officer Causey with the with the flashlight there. I should have asked him for it earlier. Nice ball there, Mike. Sabine State right, Bank strikeout right. there for Mike Henry. C Coach, can you see how many strikeouts he yeah, has so let far? Yeah, check all that for you. I sure can. Now we have Giles up the bat with uh, Dakota Johnson, the X mark on deck circle. He's got Mike has five strikeouts. Excellent. Ball one there. So a strikeout per inning, nothing wrong with that. One no pitch here from Henry. Looks like a strike. Yep, good job. So one and one. Softball, we're looking at is that thirteen, Chris? Yes, sir. Thirteen nothing. Look like ten hits. Top of four, ten hits. Yep. Good pitch, a little bit up. That was Ooh. a great pitch. Mike is seeming to be able to command his off-speed stuff a little bit better than his fastball. It's almost like his fastball is running a little bit too much on him, but we can uh, – that's a good fastball good right fastball there. there. Yeah, that yeah. one ran. That might be his best, his best fastball yep. tonight that was by a, the sounds of the mitt. Yep, it looked like it ran, kind of handcuffed that batter, so that was nice. It yeah, looks like DJ didn't quite know – what was coming at him? 2-2 two -two pitch here from Henry. Half swing there to play Mike. Mike. Good play. Good job. Yep. One to three there from Henry to Aldridge for the second out of the inning. And Oakdale's down to one out here, Coach. Their last at bat. Yep. These same two teams play at Oakdale on Thursday. Uh, of course, I know we talked about the the game tomorrow, where your Eagles travel across the river to play 
Tauga Indians. We have Johnson at the plate now. I can't see numbers at number one. Yeah, yep. that's Johnson. I'm yep. sorry. Yeah, so Giles just was put out one to three. That's 0-1 to, to DJ. Ball, so one and one. If I'm not mistaken, Mike Mike will be five and zero. I think this will be. Yeah. I think this will be five and zero for Michael. One one here. Good pitch. Nice curve. Yep. One and two. So now the Warriors are down to one last strike. One two from Henry. Pitch. Balls put in a play to Cohen. Cohen to Drake. Eagles win, Eagles win, Eagles win. So score of 16 to nothing and a five. So it's a run rule here after five innings. And uh, we're going to take a break and we'll come back and we'll close this one out with the box score and, and have Coach Jordan come out with a, a player of the game. And uh, you're watching Menard Baseball 446 Sports. Hi, I'm Kimberly Harrell, Certified Residential Appraiser. I am currently a leading provider of appraisal services for mortgage lending, employee relocation, estate planning, and community property settlements. My experience in real estate over the past 13 years and currently serving as president of the Greater Central Louisiana Realtors Association has given me a clear understanding of the real estate world and the ever-changing market we live in today. For any of your valuation needs, give me Kimberly Harrell a call. And welcome back to Eagles Nest here where And welcome back to the Eagles Nest here where your Holy Savior Menard take down the Oakdale Warriors 16 to nothing to improve to 7 and 0 in district and 14 and 8 overall and the Oakdale Warriors dropped to 13 and 7 and now 5 and 2 in district and uh, this is going to be a, a good PR victory for uh, for us Lord uh, and Waylon, do you have the, the box score for us? <laughs> really, really an impressive outing at the plate, you know. <coughs> Excuse me on that, Coach. We've um, we hit the ball throughout the lineup. We hit, ended up with 10 hits on the night um, and led by Jay Gilry had two hits. Drake Aldridge had two hits, but, you know, Scott had a hit. Um, RBIs, we had Scott with two, LaRue with two. Um, Butterfield, Butterfield had a great day. He had two RBIs. Um, ben Wade ended up um, – you know, that hit he had, he had a couple RBIs. And then Jaden Williams come in with bases loaded in the last inning. He had a bases clearing double, got three RBIs. So, nice job by the Eagles of hitting up and down the lineup. Um, and, of course, Mike Henry. Um, Mike had a really good um, – let me look at his numbers here. Mike gave up five innings, three hits, um, only one walk, five strikeouts, and um, hit batters. I think he had he had um, three hit batters on the night. But very, um, very good – Outing for Mike, um, 73 pitches, 40, 42 strikes is what I've got here, but he, he did an excellent job too. Yeah, Mr. T. Ray Rich walking past us behind while we're on air. Uh, grew up with, with his kids. Uh, 
local businessman. Appreciate him, everything he does for I'm have to Polish Avery Menard. I'm going to have to have a talk with Coach Jordan. If we get three, four days off at a time and hit the ball like this, maybe, <laughs> maybe we need a, a mental, mental day, some mental health days, and because um, the Eagles really swing, swing the bat well tonight. Yeah, uh, let me text him and see um, see if they're going to be coming out here. Uh, you know, sometimes since they've been off so so long, they they may forget about us out here on the perch. But uh, so we're um, going to check on him. But uh, yeah, so talk talk about tomorrow a little bit more. Tomorrow's going to like tomorrow's a, a game. You know, we talk about prepping for the playoffs, and um, we we um, the Eagles are going to War Ten across the river to play the Tioga Indians. Um, you know. Coach Montiel, Coach Coach Marks have a great relationship. Um, me and Coach Montiel have a great, you know, I, I, we do a lot of different things together, and um, it's it's going to be a good 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 matchup. Any time Tioga Menard play, you, you know, you're gonna, it's you know, you can throw out the records and you can get ready for a quality baseball game, um, and um, so hopefully we we can we can you know I, I'm expecting a playoff type. Um, you know, atmosphere, playoff top games. And that's that's why we scheduled these games the last couple of weeks of the season to to um, prep and get ready for the playoffs. But uh, Coach um, I, um, coach Montiel and them, I think they were playing Peabody today. Um, I don't know if, if the weather messed that game up or not. I guess we'll find out. But we, um, we're we going to go over there and, and um, like I said, the 5, 5.30 um, matchup versus, um, versus the um, Tog Indians. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be a good one. Uh, and, uh, I'm not going to spoil it for Coach Marsh, but I'm going to ask him who he's sending to the bump. So we, we'll, we'll question him about that a little, little bit. Oh, too gosh. Am I, don't, don't make me mute. Am I going to have to mute your mic? Oh, no. Okay. Just want to make sure. You don't, get us, don't get us in trouble out here at the Hicks family, Coach, Hicks parents. Coach, Coach Marsh taking that slow, long jog out here. Yeah, and I guess. Uh, Who's he? Is that Nate? Might be Nate. I guess he had uh, had a. Uh... Yep. So we have Coach Jordan out here, and yeah, it looks like uh, Nate Bilbo's coming. So that's what we talk about, man. All right, Coach, can you hear us? Yep. I'll... Turn it up a little bit. Okay. How about there? Yep, I'm good there. Okay. So, uh, man, congratulations. Uh, seven and zero now, and in, in district, and uh, fourteen and eight overall, and just uh, the winning ways keep on keeping on. Sure. Uh, I thought it was really good, in which I'm sure y'all discussed it the way the bats came alive tonight. Finally, um, and, and you know, we obviously rather get hot late than early, because um, then them teams seem to cool off, but. It was time. It was time to see a bunch of barrels tonight. And, uh, you know, hats off to Mike for throwing a, a good enough game to shut him out. So, Yeah, Coach, like you just said, it was hitting throughout the lineup. It wasn't one, um, one, one guy that it was really – I was looking at the stats. And we had multi, a couple of multi-hit games with Drake and Nate. And, um, and you know, Jaden Williams coming in there at the end, man, hit a basis clearing triple – I mean, basis clearing double there. And, and um, But everybody – and then everybody – Throughout the lineup, we were swinging the bat. Yep, one through nine did. And, and I thought that was good. Even, though, you know, the guys that didn't get hits, they still manufactured runs and got people over when they needed to. So, uh, just a big team win, you know. Yeah. Glad to be a part of it. And uh, got to Ogre tomorrow, and I know that's going to be a good one. They're going to probably throw their guy against well, us. Well, we, so. we, we kind of talked about that a little bit, and I was going to um, – I kind of you know me and you talk of – Pretty regularly, but um, that's what I was going to ask you. They they throw in their guy, and then who who are we going to we're, we're going with Cooper. Yep. we're going that's with Cooper. I'm, yep. uh, I'm going to give Cooper the ball, and I'm going to give Larue the ball at Oakdale the oh, next day. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think it's going to be a good game tomorrow night. You know, yeah, this one we're we're going we're going to use a 24 hour rule. We're going to forget it in the morning. We're going to wake up and get ready for Tioga tomorrow. What time tomorrow? Uh, it's four and six. Okay, so, so we got JV okay. first, and then varsity starts at six o'clock. Okay, so yeah, it's going to be at Tioga. It's going to be they play at Ward 10 for everybody watching it. At 4 o'clock JV and 6 o'clock varsity, and it should be two really good arms and two great ball clubs. So, yep. Coach, we appreciate and I got you. Nate with us, too. Yep. So. Appreciate Nate, you. Appreciate y'all, man. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. So, joined here by Nate Bilbo. Nate, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, man. Excellent game, of course. Once again, always solid at defense. Uh, man, the bat came alive tonight. What'd you, what'd you think about your, your, your at bats tonight? You know, I was just taking it one at bat at a time, focusing on. Staying away with it still and not coming off the ball too much, and that's what I did. Uh, hit a ball 
oppo today. Yeah, yeah you, you all, you know, you are putting, now you're using all the fields, you know, uh, you know, all parts of the field, excuse me. And uh, I know that, uh, man, 7 and 0 in district, trying to repeat as district champs, and we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I know, I know we have uh, Tauga tomorrow, but uh, I think Coach, <laughs> I call him Coach LaRue. I, you, I don't know what Nate, you call Nate, him. I'm going to tell you, man. I'm, I'm going to let you talk. I know you, you, you like to talk a lot, so I'm just going to ask some open-ended questions here. But tell, tell me your thought process on the best play of the night, man. You seeing that ball hitting the right field and getting, getting that double. Well, tell, me what ha tell, me, tell me what happened on that play. You, you busted your butt out of the box, I know. But to explain to me what you saw in front of you were, and you took second base. You know which one I'm playing, you're talking about, the one you went off of. Go ahead. Tell me, tell me what you saw. So... I didn't see the ball off the bat right at first, I'm not going to lie. I, I knew it was hit. I didn't know if it was in play or foul. But as soon as it got to first base, I saw it got up on him and went down the line. And uh, at first, I wasn't sure about taking second. And I kind of took a slow round on first. And then I realized he wouldn't get to it, so just took second. Well, that's good, man. Because like I said, I, I don't know if that was – but you let off that, that inning um, with a double there. And that's kind of what got us started in that third inning. We had some big hits. But um, – I like to see you play hard like that. I know, I know you do that every day. Sir, appreciate it. Well, Nate, man, enjoy this. Like Coach Jordan said, 24-hour rule, enjoy it. And then uh, you all have a big one tomorrow at Tioga. So, man, go out and get them tomorrow. Yes, sir. We'll do. Appreciate, appreciate you. you. Thank you, Nate. Sir, thank have you. a good evening. You too. So, Coach, uh, another big win by the Eagles. Uh, I know uh, – no, you're a proud dad tonight and a, a proud coach of a lot of these former young men. And, uh, man, exciting to watch. And, uh, man, the, the great thing about it, like, like you and Coach Jordan said, is the bats are coming alive. We knew the pitching and the defense was there. Now the bats are coming alive. And, uh, and you know, they may not have been facing, you know, here recently, the, the, the velo that they were. But you know what? This is now the games. This is now what you're going to see. Well, what you're saying and, and hit, time, hitting is time. Yes, man. hitting is time, and it's it, you know they the, as a pitcher's job to keep you off speed, keep you off off balance, and um, right, and you've got to learn to adjust to the the speed, velo, whether it's up, down, or what. But um, but but I, what I saw tonight was a lot of confidence at the plate. Um, and 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 you know, you know, Oak, Oakdale was second place team coming in coming in yes. you know, into this matchup, and and what I was really proud of is really showed our senior leadership. And they took care of business. It was like it was it was it was all business. It was you know it, it was really when Coach Jordan said it. We we moved runners over. We had a couple of sack flies. You know did the little things that that um, that help you you know win big. But but I was definitely impressed with the with the business like approach. And um and and, and you know th these kids have been in the fire. You know yeah. what I mean and, and and they they um they they expect to be good and um, they expect to have success and. You know, baseball's a like we say a game of failure. So, so when you when you're having success, you got to kind of stay positive with it. Yeah, and the one thing that we talked about on the broadcast between the softball, which <laughs> update on the softball, it's still 13 to nothing. Uh, your Lady Eagles over Rose Pine in what looks to be the the bottom of the top of the fifth. So that game's still going on and. I don't know if Tom, yeah, it looks like Tom and them are over there broadcasting that. So that's that's good. So once you get, if you're done with us, you can just switch right over to to Tom Boucher and have 446 Sports there on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, we will not cover tomorrow. It's an away game or Thursday. We will be back here next Monday. We have Monday and Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday, yeah. Now got. here, uh, which will be um, which will be big. And it's then Tuesday, two, two, two big games next week. You know, it's it's we we got Monday. We've got um, Grant coming in, which Grant's doing very well. And. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> Got yeah. the LaRue, LaRue crew behind us. So you give get, us. You I'll that. tell you what, with, with all them, Coach, you definitely have a cheering section. Yeah, I don't know so. about a cheering section or a money, <laughs> money pit because they probably go want to go get something to eat. So, and but, I, uh, look, I got a good friend right here coming up, Brian. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and – I'll go ahead and end the broadcast. So, uh, so – Okay, I'm sorry. So yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the thing about being live, man. We get yeah, to get good. to see and talk to people. But uh, but man, no, I really I, appreciate you filling in for Danny. Uh, yeah, I, I know it's it. a I know it's a fun time. Uh, appreciate uh, Danny and Miss Becky uh, for for taking our calls. You know, with some of the technical difficulties we had, but it went fairly smooth. But uh, appreciate you know Doug Gann, founder of Four Four Six, for allowing us to do this. Uh, please say say your prayers for. 
Coach Chuck yes. Perkins, Lord, and his family, the, the loss of his mom, Lord. But uh, for, for everybody involved, he's Coach LaRue. I'm Nick Magnano. You have a good evening, and may the Lord bless you.